For many, the 60s were the coolest time ever. We're talking about the days of peace signs, Beatles tunes, and Twiggy. Each fad in this video will invoke more and more nostalgia, so if you watch all the way to the end, prepare to have tears in your eyes as all your childhood memories come flooding back. If you're digging this trip back in time, smash that like button and hit subscribe. Your love helps us keep the good old days alive in our hearts. Beatlemania. Let me take you down memory lane. It was a tsunami of tunes and teenage screams. Everywhere you turned, the Beatles were blasting, with their tracks not just being earworms, but outright musical uprisings. Imagine the scene, hordes of fans losing their minds, posters smacking every kid's wall, and those shaggy mop tops bobbing everywhere. But hey, it wasn't all about the tunes, stellar as they were. This was a cultural quake, shaking up fashion flipping attitudes on their heads, and giving us a new lens to view the world. Everyone was either dying to be a beetle or to hang off their arms. Beatlemania wasn't your garden variety craze. It was like the soundtrack to our wild, youthful dreams. Twiggy and the mod look. Man, what a riot that was. Twiggy wasn't just some model. She was the queen of cool, a wayfish wonder with peepers that could knock you sideways. The mod look, it was all about chucking the rule book out the window. Picture sharp geometric patterns paint box colors, and those daring mini skirts. It was more than fashion. It was a full-blown rebellion in threads. Everyone was jonesing for that sleek, yet in-your-face, mod style. Pictures strutting down a London street, every coffee shop bursting with the young and the restless decked out in their mod best. It wasn't just a look, it was a movement, a visual symphony of cool that screamed, 60s chic, the twist dance. This dance was a downright revolution. Dance floors turned into twist fests, with everyone gyrating their hips and shuffling their feet in that addictive rhythm. It was more than a dance. It was a cultural wildfire. Simple, yet groundbreaking. The twist was the great equalizer. Age or dance skills be damned. It tossed out the stuffy ballroom rulebook. Just pure freedom, fun, and a dash of sass. It was the dance that etched itself into the era, making every Joe and Jane feel like the life of the party. The twist dance is synonymous with 60s culture, but later in the video, we will show you a 60s fad guaranteed to give you even more goosebumps drive-in theaters these weren't just your run-of-the-mill movie nights. They were epic adventures under the stars. Think massive screens lighting up the night, rows upon rows of cars, each a little world of its own. Families piling in with blankets and snacks, couples cozying up in the back seat, everyone tuning into the same story on the big screen. It was the ultimate hangout spot. You'd rock up in your car, grab some popcorn and laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear under the open sky. Drive-ins were like the rebel kid of movie watching, a symbol of freedom, youth, and good old American spirit. They were places to chill, places to be seen, and yeah, maybe even steal that first kiss in the shadows of the back row. Thinking about drive-ins is like flipping through a photo album filled with snapshots of classic American cars, stars, and the big screen. A charming mix of entertainment and a sense of belonging, all from the comfort of your car. Bouffant and beehive hairdos. These weren't just any old hairstyles. They were like sculptures on top of your head. Women back then weren't just doing their hair. They were creating masterpieces. They'd tease and spray their hair to crazy heights, making these big, bold statements that you could see from a mile away. It was all about going big or going home. The higher the hair, the more you stood out. Salons were like buzzing beehives themselves, filled with chatter, laughter, and the hiss of hairspray. Women would walk in and strut out looking like movie stars. These hairstyles styles were more than just a fashion choice. They were a badge of confidence, a way for women to strut their stuff and show the world they meant business. But if the idea of a beehive haircut makes you laugh, we have a fashion trend later in the video you are not gonna want to miss. Miniskirts and go-go boots were like a cool team from the 1960s fashion scene. The miniskirt was super short and showed that people were tired of wearing boring clothes. When folks paired it with shiny go-go boots, it was like a bright, bold fashion statement. Imagine a dance floor with people in short skirts and shiny boots, just having a blast. It wasn't just about clothes, it was about having fun and feeling free. 
So, when you think about miniskirts and go-go boots, think about a time when people used clothes to say, we're here and we're not following the old rules. These trends reshaped society and set the stage for a new era of fearless self-expression and liberation. The space race. Now that was something straight out of a wild science fiction story. But oh boy, it was as real as it gets. Picture this. The United States and USSR, two giants, locked in a high-stakes race, not on land, but to the stars. It was like the whole world had its eyes glued to the sky, watching rockets blast off, feeling a mix of awe, pride, and a dash of fear. This wasn't just about who had the best tech. It was like a massive chess game for national pride, a showcase of what humans could pull off. Every launch, every orbit, every moon landing, it was like humanity was stretching its hands out to the unknown, itching to touch the stars. The excitement of watching a rocket shoot into the sky was electric. Kids and adults alike would gather around TVs, watching in wonder as astronauts defied gravity, orbiting Earth, and even leaving footprints on the moon. The space race wasn't just a chapter in a history book, it was a saga of imagination, guts, and pushing the envelope. It sparked dreams in millions, nudged us to think bigger, and really hammered home the idea that, heck, if we can reach the moon, what can't we do? The Volkswagen Beetle. This car was a full-blown cultural icon. With its quirky shape and that friendly, almost smiling face, the Beetle was like the friendliest car on the block. It wasn't about tearing down the road at breakneck speeds, or dripping with luxury. It was about being simple, approachable, and downright charming. The beetle stood out in a crowd. Those round lines and that one-of-a-kind look made it instantly recognizable. It became a symbol for those who marched to the beat of their own drum, the counterculture folks who valued quirkiness and practicality over flash and speed. Cruising in a beetle, you weren't just getting from one place to another. You were on a journey with style and personality. It was the car for the everyman, the artist, the dreamer. Driving a Beetle was like saying, Yeah, I'm going places, but I'm having a blast doing it my way. Peace symbols and flower power. Peace signs and groovy flowers splashed everywhere, on shirts, flags, even painted on smiling faces. It was like everyone was speaking this colorful language of protest, shouting, No more war, without saying a word. The flower? It wasn't just a flower. It was a symbol of chill vibes and non-violence. A way to say, let's make love, not war. And that peace symbol, man, it was more than a cool design. It was the universal badge of change. This wasn't just about looking hip. It was about making a statement, spreading good vibes and daring to dream of a world where everyone got along. It was like activism and art had a baby and it was beautiful, bursting with hope and splashes of color. Andy Warhol's pop art. Warhol took the stuff we see every day, soup cans, celebs, and turned them into something mind-blowing. It was like he was holding up a mirror to our faces, showing us how crazy we were about buying stuff and following stars. Imagine strolling into an art gallery and seeing a can of soup on the wall, but now it's art, and it's making you stop and think. His work was loud, colorful, and sometimes it made people mad, but that was the point. He was blurring the lines between an ad and a masterpiece, making us question what's art and what's just stuff. Warhol's pop art was like a commentary on the world, making us take a second look at the everyday things we usually just walk past. It was the kind of art that didn't just hang there looking pretty. It made you think, it made you question, and it made you see the world in a whole new light. What's your favorite 60s memory or trend? Drop it in the comments.